I came across a clip from the famous music artist Shawn Mendes where he talks about how he was an atheist until recently after he had a spiritual experience while listening to some people singing about Jesus. Now I found the clip really interesting and thought it was really good, but I also found it to be really bad at the same time. And I think you might feel the same. So let's go ahead and talk about why. Here's how he describes his spiritual experience. You know, writing songs and then I had a really huge song when I was really young and then somehow wrote another really huge song when I was super young and then another one after that. And none of that was coming from a, a knowing place, at least. I had no idea what was going on. It was just like all kind of happening. Only in the last like two years, I've realized like the real uh, power that comes that music is and there's something so interesting because I grew up kind of more or less atheist and now becoming much more spiritual and really being sure there's a God or sure there's a higher thing and there's a the universe or whatever you like to call it music was the thing that did that for me watching Maverick City Choir I think they're called Maverick mm. City Choir singing about God singing about Jesus I'm sitting there watching this YouTube video and they're singing about Jesus and I just start crying, like crying mm. my eyes out. And I'm like, I'm like, you know when you're crying and it's like, this is like something leaving me? Yeah. Mm. This is like that type of cry. It's like, you know, and I'm like, how is something that my whole life I've grown up to believe is fanatic and, and, and not science and not the truth feel like home mm. because of this song? Okay, let's pause right there for a second. When Sean describes the effect that the music had on him, basically what he's saying is that he had a personal experience inside of himself, and that experience told him something true about the world outside of himself that he didn't believe before. And he used to be an atheist, but the experience told him that there's something greater out there. Now, if you're a Christian, up until this part in the interview, you're probably thinking, amen and praise God and found the clip to be encouraging so far. Of course I can see why, but at this point in my life, when I hear stuff like this now, I take a step back before I come to any conclusions. The reason why is because, for those that don't know, I have an identical twin brother who was in a similar position to Sean in that he isn't a Christian yet and also had a spiritual experience. Now I'll go ahead and link a video of him and me discussing our beliefs and differences down below, but my brother and I have had a lot of conversations about why why I believe in Christianity and how the evidence for Christianity convinced me that it's true. Going all the way back to November of 2014, after I sent him an email with some links to some of the evidence from the checkout, he told me that in order for him to convert to Christianity, he would need to have a personal experience with God. I still have the email he wrote to me explaining it. He basically said that none of the evidence for Christianity would make him believe and that the only thing that would convince him would be a spiritual experience of some sort. And after talking to him about it more, I I told him that I hoped that he would get the spiritual experience that he was seeking. Then in December of 2016, almost exactly two years later, he texted me and said, I have to tell you something. I had a spiritual experience. Now I couldn't believe my phone when I saw that text message and I immediately started to praise God. My twin said that it was too much for him to type over text message so he was going to type it all up in an email to make sure he didn't forget anything and that he would send me the email as soon as he was done. Now of course I waited not so patiently for the email until it finally came in and my adrenaline was pumping and I was so excited but as I started to read the email almost immediately my disappointment started to settle in. Basically he told me that he had an out of body experience. Experience. He said how now he was able to understand reality much better and he said that now he was certain that there was no such thing as right or wrong and that there wasn't a God that had anything to do with our eternal destiny. And that was a bummer. It was ironic that in all of the years that I hoped that he would get a personal experience, he finally got one. But instead of it leading him closer to Christianity, it actually led him further away from it. It was at that point that I realized that since a personal experience is what he considered to be the best evidence for the truth about reality, then a personal experience would also be equally capable of leading him away from the truth about reality without him even knowing the difference. Since I often also work with parents whose kids left the faith, a lot of the times what I see is that the kids convert because of an experience that they had and then they leave because of experiences as well. So when I hear about experiences like Sean's, I'm always cautious not to get too excited too fast, especially since biblically speaking, we aren't promised these sorts of experiences. So now with that in mind, let's go ahead and get back to Sean's interview and listen to what he immediately says after he talks about the experience that he had while listening to Christian music. How is something that my whole life I've grown up to believe is fanatic and and, and and not science and not the truth feel like home mm. because of this song. Mm. And 
then I started listening to um, uh, uh, hy- um, not hymns, m- like mantras, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and the same feeling, this feeling of home. And I'm listening to mantras in the morning while I'm like stretching, and I'm like, what is this thing? Like Kundalini type mantras? Kundal- or well, like, or like, uh, like um, what are they called? I can't. I don't know exactly the word for them, but w- just the songs, yeah. the songs yeah, from yeah. India, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it seems that the strong and powerful experience that Sean had while listening to Christian music was the same experience that he had while listening to what seems to be non-Christian music. Now, I don't have any reason to doubt that Sean's telling the truth about experiences. I'd be willing to bet that he is. And when it comes to my twin, I know him well enough to know that he really did experience something, and I don't think for a second that he just made it all up. So because of that after my twin told me about his experience i remember starting to wonder if maybe i was wrong about how i saw the world maybe what he experienced was the truth and he was right and as a consequence maybe i was wrong about my christian beliefs i knew that what he said contradicted the truth of christianity in several ways so i also knew that both of us couldn't be right at least one of us had to be wrong i also knew people from a lot of different faiths who also claimed to have these sorts of internal experiences that told them that their religion was true as well and i knew that we all couldn't be right now some Something similar could be said about Sean's experience with these seemingly non-Christian mantras that had the same effect on him. Most likely, they too contradict the truth of Christianity. So how do we know what's true and what isn't true? Well, as I thought more deeply about my brother's experience, I realized that all of the evidence for his new understanding of the world was internal and something that I couldn't directly investigate. So even though I believe my brother that he experienced what he said he did, I also realized that I couldn't know for sure what the cause of his experience was. Of course, the cause could have been some sort of spiritual reality that caused him to have his experience, or it also could have been caused by a hallucination, a vivid dream, or something else natural along those lines. So I kind of got to this weird point where I started to wonder, who do I trust? My brother that I've always known and his experiences or these disciples who I've never met and their experiences. And that's when I started thinking about how contrary to the experiences of those like my brother and Sean, when it came to the reasons that the early Christians gave for why they believed in Jesus, the evidence they gave seemed to almost always be public and verifiable. Jesus did public miracles. He walked on water. He raised people from the dead and he even raised himself from the dead. These things weren't hidden from everyone else. They were made public so that way others could see and verify what happened for themselves. When John the Baptist sent his followers to ask Jesus if he was the Messiah, Jesus didn't respond by saying, I know I'm the Messiah because I had this internal experience deep down inside and trust me because of it. Instead, Jesus said, go and tell John what you see and hear. The blind are made to see, those who could not walk are walking, those who had bad skin diseases are healed, those who could not hear are hearing. The dead are raised up to life and the good news is preached to poor people. Over and over, the evidence that the disciples gave about Jesus was verifiable in public, and along with things like prophecy, that evidence is why the first Christians came to believe that Jesus was who he claimed he was. I've talked about this in other videos, but today, we still have access to evidence that's verifiable in public, and that evidence is what eventually convinced me that Christianity is true. So when we think about Sean having a personal experience that he believes told him something true about reality, he could be right. It could have been, and it could have even been from God, but he needs to keep going in order to know more. His experiences might have been the first step, but it's not the ultimate ending. If he wants to really know the truth about God, and if his experiences can be distinguished from other experiences that contradict his experience, then he needs to also explore the evidence as well. And if he does, then I'm confident that he'll see that the evidence for Christianity is unparalleled by other belief systems. And most importantly, this truth can lead him to realize not just that Christianity is true, but also what that truth means for him personally. It means that God's self-sacrificial love is far deeper than anything that Sean has ever and can ever experience through music. It means that at the height of all of the love songs that he writes, the love songs that he can feel so deeply in his soul, they're all just a reflection of the greatest love story about the lengths that God went through to show his creation how much they mean to him. God loved us so much that he punt on human flesh and came into our world and offered himself as a sacrifice 
sacrifice so that way we could live forever in peace. It means that God made himself vulnerable to the cruelty of this world so that way we could experience eternity apart from the cruelty of this world. Jesus suffered the consequences for the things that we freely chose to do wrong so that way we wouldn't have to. Jesus did it for our sake and our benefit, not his own. The truest and the deepest love that Sean sings about in his songs is maximized and personified in God and what he's done for us on the cross. All we have to do is accept that free gift. So in this life, there really are those times when the physical world and the spiritual world meet and I think that we can show that. That's the realization that caused Jordan Peterson to break down in tears when he was thinking about Jesus. So go ahead and click on this video to see what I mean. But the next time that you hear someone refusing to love God with all of their mind, what are you going to say? What do you mean?